The process of using a biped skeleton when exporting to Motion Builder is as easy, if not easier, than using Max Bones. A biped skeleton can be created with a simple click and drag, as you probably already know. It can be renamed at creation time. Or you can rename a biped later by accessing the motion panel and changing the root name under modes and display. Rename the skeleton to follow the character's name, Pepe. Pepe is already set in a T-stance pose facing the minus Y axis. These are both requirements needed by Motion Builder. Note that unlike with Max Bones, you don't need to worry about skeleton elements names when using a biped. Export the FBX file as you did with the last movie. Name it Pepe Biped and accept the default parameters. You may get some warnings related to the geometry in the process. Do not worry about those as your ultimate target is to deal with animation data. The mesh itself will be unaffected when you are back in 3ds Max. In Motion Builder, load the file you just saved. With the cursor over the viewer, press A to frame Pepe into the viewer, and then press Ctrl A until the viewer is in X-ray mode. In the last movie, when dealing with Max Bones, you use the character icon to rig your skeleton. If you try the same process here, you get an error. The character tool is meant to be used with skeleton elements that have very specific names that follow the Motion Builder naming convention. Therefore, Motion Builder is looking for 13 specific limbs and it cannot find them because biped skeletons have their own naming convention. Press Ctrl Z to undo the characterization process. In order to characterize or rig a biped skeleton, use the 3ds Max biped template instead. This does the same job as the character tool, but works based on the 3ds Max biped's naming convention. From this point on, the process is very much the same as you have seen in the last movie. You can activate the control rig in full body FKIK mode, or you can use a motion capture file and retarget your character to follow it. From the tutorials folder, drag the I slip motion file into the viewer and merge the animation. The yellow skeleton appears. Change Pepe's input to follow the motion of the skeleton. To export Pepe's animation back to 3ds Max, you need to first plot it to the skeleton. This is done by choosing Edit, Plot Character, Skeleton. You can then save that motion file separately by choosing File, Save Character Animation. Name the file Pepe Biped Animated. Back in 3ds Max, import the newly saved FBX file by choosing the Update Scene Elements option. This only brings animation data on objects of the same name, in this case the biped skeleton. If you need to make changes to the animation, you can always do so in Motion Builder. There, you plot the animation back to the control rig and animate additive layers as seen in the last movie. However, Using bipeds, you also have the possibility of adding adjustments layers simply by using biped layers. If all you need is a simple overall offset, this might be easier than going back and forth continuously between the two applications. In the next movie, you take a look at a scenario involving a cat skeleton.